Hello, my name is Barbara Lloyd and I want to share with you some of the observations and reflections from my research with faithful and lively congregations. In this session, we are focusing on justice making, congregations open to the wounded and the world. In our present social context, Canadians are facing challenges to our understanding and practice of democracy. Limits on the right to dissent as a form of social change threaten our ability as citizens to work with our leaders for a more just society. As well, popular economic ideas seem to assume that all of us will benefit from the increasing wealth of a few. What trickles down, though, are just crumbs under the table. These attitudes and practices hurt those who are weakest in our communities. Charity is often seen as the way to address issues of need. Of course, in times of crisis, giving out of charity is necessary. But charity alone does not empower those who are in need in the long run, nor does it ask deeper questions about the root causes of poverty, homelessness, violence, or environmental degradation. Charity may even shield some of us from recognizing our own part in perpetuating unjust conditions and policies after disasters are over. Charity, service, and the pursuit of justice are all themes that run through scripture. Our biblical tradition of justice seeking is central to the story of the Exodus. It is embedded in the words of the prophets, in the life of Jesus, and in the early Christian communities. Micah speaks of doing justice, loving kindness, and walking humbly with our God. And that's the definition of justice making. It is central to who we are as Christians and to the mission of the church. Justice is the public face of love that is God's dream for the earth and all its creatures. Justice making requires collective and sustained action by people of faith. It requires working with our members of parliament or with local or provincial government leaders for social change. Faithful and lively congregations engage more actively in justice making by preparing disciples for justice and mission, by moving from charity to justice, by connecting local to global action, and by working together with others for common cause. Choosing where you put your energy for justice as a congregation depends on the issues in your context, where your passions are, denominational commitments, and opportunities for joint action and solidarity with others. In your conversations today, you will have a chance to discuss more ways that your congregation might respond to situations of injustice through acts of charity, service, and justice making as part of its ministry and mission.